Honey Lemon Water. Well, hello, dudes, dudettes, duders, and everyone in between. Today, we're going to put the higher fun in higher functionality as we explore the back panel and computer connectivity of the Zoom L20. Once we're connected to the computer, we'll look at the best practices with the board while using a DAW, in this case, Logic, as well as Zoom and OBS. There will be timestamps in the description, so you can skip ahead if I'm going too slowly. If I'm going too fast, please leave a comment and I'll expand on whatever wasn't clear. The first thing you'll notice in this video is that there is a lot of equipment on the desk. So we're going to start with a quick pipeline overview so you can know what you're looking at. There are two microphones on the desk. The Sennheiser MK4 is feeding into the camera and what you're hearing now. The Shure SM58 is plugged into the L20 and will be used for vocal demos once we're in software. We've also got a mobile device plugged into the console via RCA to make sure that we have a constant stereo signal feeding through the board, whether I'm on mic or not. We've also got the master out from the L20 being fed into a Zoom H6, and we'll get into that later in the video. It's being done for a specific reason related to OBS. With all that in mind, let's move to the back of the console. Most of the tools are pretty self-evident, or yonder L20. Going left to right, there's the power switch and the DC in jack. Next to that is the host connector for a USB thumb drive. You can use this to save and load audio files as well as project files. I do everything off of the SD card, so this will likely go unused. This next one made me smile. It's a switch that lets you choose how you want to connect the L20 to other devices. After years of using devices that control this through internal menus, it's really nice to have a physical switch. One thing to keep in mind is that you have to turn the device off before adjusting the switch. Once it's locked into a specific mode, the L20 needs a full shutdown to change modes. The USB host setting will engage the USB host port, and the other two will disengage the USB host port and engage the USB device port. The first setting after USB host is card reader. In card reader mode, you're using a $1,000 piece of equipment to access the data on an SD card, and that is absolutely baller. Finally, there's the audio interface setting, which will allow you to connect the L20 to a desktop computer for recording directly into a DAW. We've got a lot of good news about how that interfacing works, and we'll cover that as soon as we're done with the panel breakdown. You can also use this port to connect the L20 to an iPad via USB, but that's a whole other video. If that's something you'd like to learn about, please leave a comment below. The next switch is the class compliance switch. If you're connecting to an iOS device, turn this on. If not, leave it set to off. Next up is the sample rate switch. Again, I'm really happy this is a physical switch. It can be a bit of a headache plunging into Zoom's menu system to change something like the sample rate. You've got 44.1, 48, and 96 kilohertz to choose from. But because this is prosumer gear, of course there are silly rules. You can only connect to a computer with this switch set to 44.1 or 48 kilohertz. I usually leave it set to 48 kilohertz because this is the highest quality signal you can record in board and through a DAW. Next up is the SD card slot. Zoom gear can be picky with SD cards on a good day, and the L20 is no time to cheap out. I use a 64 gigabyte Class 10 SDXC Extreme Pro and would recommend that you get something at least comparable to that. 22 tracks recording 96 kilohertz at 24 bit will chew through data really fast. I cannot say it enough. Do not skimp on the SD card. Next up is the control jack for a foot switch. If you want to get the official zoom foot switch, you can plug it into the board and use it for a single function like starting or stopping record or playback. Whoopie doo. Finally, we've got the jack for the Bluetooth device. This is not a Bluetooth transmitter, but instead a plug for Zoom's proprietary Bluetooth device, which costs $3 to manufacture, but $40 to buy. This is obviously stupid. You will notice that this is the only completely idiotic part of the back of the L20, and the engineers at Zoom are total scrubs for including this. Come at me, Zoom engineers. You know you use cheap components for the H4N, and you know this dongle is a bad idea. We can scrap anytime you want. While the back panel is, at a glance, a much simpler beast to tame than the front panel, it actually unlocks incredible functionality with the device by allowing you to use it as an audio interface with your computer. Before you can connect to the computer, though, you have to download the drivers, and those can be found on the Zoom website. Link in the description. While you're at the website, you can also download the latest firmware for the L20 and update your board, if you're bored. Installing will require you to reboot for the updates to take effect. 
Once the drivers are installed, boot up your DAW of choice. I'll be using Logic Pro, but these same principles will apply across most professional audio software. First, go to Preferences and Audio to make sure that your Zoom L20 is appearing as the input device. I use the headphone plug for audio output and recommend that you do the same if you're just getting started. There are benefits to using the L20 as the output device, but right now we're aiming for simplicity in our workflow. Click Apply to apply your changes. My Apply button is grayed out because I haven't changed anything. With our preferences correctly set, we can create a new project and then create 22 tracks of audio. While the L20 is a 20-track mixer, it also sends the master out to the computer, and that's on tracks 21 and 22. You'll now have a project with 22 tracks. Unfortunately, they will all record the audio coming from track 1 on the board. To change this, go over to the Info column and change the input setting. If you don't see the input column, click on the eye in the circle in the upper left and it will appear. Audio track 1 is set to input 1, so we don't have to change that. We will have to change track 2 to input 2, track 3 to input 3, and so on down the line. This takes a minute, and you don't want to do this every time you start a session. And that's where templates come in handy. After you've set all your tracks to the correct input, you'll want to do one more thing before saving a template, though. Tracks 17 through 22 are tethered stereo signals, so we have to pan the tracks left and right. Once you've done all that, save the template and now you'll never have to do that again. Anytime you're starting an L20 project, you just load the template and kick back as the plaudits pour in. If you've watched our video on the face panel controls, you already know all about where the channel strip kicks in in relation to recording. It's the exact same thing when plugging the L20 into your computer. Tracks 1 through 20 will send a signal according to gain and compression, but will bypass channel strip settings and faders. The master out, which is being fed to input 21 and 22, will include all adjustments you make to the channel strip and faders. You're now good to go with Logic. Congratulations! One great way to celebrate a success like that is subscribing to this channel. While we can't cover every bit of software in this video, I do want to go over OBS and Zoom as they're so common for video conferencing and streaming. Zoom is the easier of the two, so we'll start with that one. Zoom is pretty simple to set up. Go to Preferences and then select the Audio tab. Make sure that your microphone is set to the Zoom L20 driver and not the system settings. For simplicity's sake, leave your speaker as external headphones or same as system, depending on your needs. One of the nice things Zoom does is take the 20 track mix and combine it into one mono signal. So whether you're using one microphone and broadcasting alone or 16 microphones and two stereo signals, you're good to go. Just remember that everything is feeding through according to gain and compression, not your master out. The volume sliders will have no effect on the pipeline. Also, be sure to test your mic before jumping into a meeting. I mean, you should already be doing that because, like a nun returning from the dry cleaner, it's a good habit to be in. OBS is a bit tougher of a customer. Tried as I might, I simply couldn't find a way to convince OBS to transmit anything other than tracks 1 and 2. Fortunately for you viewing at home, I came up with a dumb workaround to get the 20-track stereo mix out of the L20 and into OBS. All you need for this dumb hack is an entire other Zoom device. I'm using the H6 because that's what I have sitting around. It's a fairly dirty solution, and I encourage you to take the ideas here and run with them. While I won't be able to test this with every combination of gear on the planet, if you have any questions about this configuration, please leave them in the comments and I'll do my level best to answer them. First, connect your master outs to your audio device. If you have minus 20 decibel pads, turn them on. The signal coming out of the L20 is going to be hotter than what the recorder is expecting. Press play on your favorite royalty-free music track and start setting your levels against that. I start with the master volume slider and RCA input signals both at zero. For this build, I've got both inputs on the H6 set to three. This will give you a good level, but it won't be stereo. It'll be a pair of identical mono tracks. To make the signal stereo, press the menu button, select input output, and scroll down to mixer. Using the Zoom's god-awful controls, click through the pan functions for the tracks you want to pan, and set them hard left and hard right. Now you've got a stereo signal. To test the stereoness of this, turn the music down and pan your voice left and right. If you're only coming out of one speaker when you pan, you're in stereo. 
Open OBS and go to Preferences. Select the Audio tab and change your mic auxiliary audio input to the H6. You can do a test of the stereo signal in two ways. The easiest is to click on the gear icon by your mic aux level and selecting Advanced Audio Properties. From there, switch Audio Monitoring to Monitor and Output. You should be able to hear in real time that the signal is stereo as you pan left and right on the L20. You can also do a quick recording and open the file up in Audition and visually confirm that you're panning left to right. As you can see, we've got a center recording at the start, then we pan left, then right, and finally back to the center channel. I hope this was helpful in interfacing your Zoom L20 with your computer. Tutorials like these should serve as a reminder of how important it is to enjoy the process, because sometimes it can get a bit hairy. There are seemingly infinite possible combinations of equipment, making it impossible to create a one-path guide to the cleanest signal feed and the dopest return on your investment for this gear. I tried to put enough in here to get you started with your own ideas and experiments without boring you to tears. If this video didn't have the answers you were looking for about the L20, please do leave a comment and maybe I can fill in those gaps in a future video. Until then, I hope you enjoy noodling around with this piece of equipment. Indeed, the journey is the reward. As always, thank you for watching. Please take a minute to subscribe and turn on the bell for notifications and don't forget to, you know what, screw that. Here's the thing, Zoom. If the board was $40 more expensive at the time of purchase, I wouldn't have even noticed. If it were $100 more expensive, I wouldn't have noticed. You could have marked up that stupid Bluetooth dongle $97 and I would have been just as happy to buy this board. But asking me to pay $40 after purchase for a piece of technology that costs $3 to manufacture makes you look like greedy dum-dums who sit in the back of rusty old Volvos chewing on light bulbs. You dopes.